Hi, this is Danny. I'd like to show you a little bit about my BMS that I bought. Uh, nobody likes um, insurance, to pay insurance neededly. And the problem with BMSs is, is um, in a word, they cost a lot or maybe they're not very reliable. So I tried to find middle ground and I found this one that I think is pretty good. It's called the Smart, BM Smart BMS. And um, I found out about it on the internet. I'm going to show you a link. But I'd like to introduce the concept of breadboarding and show you a little bit about the Smart BMS. Uh, and then um, then you could kind of make the decision for yourself whether you're going to do a BMS. It's much easier to do it on a breadboard versus, you know, doing it on a, a, a battery bank that has, you know, hundreds of uh, milliamp or amp hours. Anyway, stand by. I'll show you what's going on. You can see my uh, pack voltages and uh, my pack voltage and my individual voltages. And I'm using uh, JBD tools. So um, you can kind of see that things are set. Um, oops, let me get the setting there. Things are set pretty conservatively. Um, the pack, the um, the current o under protection is set at 2.7 volts on a per cell basis. Um, and so you can change these. Um, you just uh, write that to EEPROM. But uh, there's another video or several other videos about this. I'm just kind of showing you what's what's going on here. Now, um, you can kind of see here I'm a big fan of breadboarding things because um, I can get a pack here and spend very little money on it and not and if I blow up a cell it's not a big deal and I can basically hook up all my equipment to this cell and it has the same voltage it just has you know maybe um, four amp hours in this cell instead of you know 150 amp hours um, so what what you do is uh, you, you can just look up breadboarding online but you just buy these very expensive breadboarder breadboards and you can kind of make all kinds of connections the nice thing about um, this is um, all the loads are manageable. For instance, this is a huge load on this battery bank. So I can do all kinds of testing on the BMS with uh, very little loads. And, and look at the size of wire, <laughs> wires I'm using. They're hardly anything. Uh, so it's so much easier to, to do a test setup with in this environment. Um, and, you know, it's not to mention it's a lot less dangerous. So you can kind of see here that I've got a, uh, I'm reading um, one cell here on, um, on, on this pack um, right here with this wire. Um, let me just show you a little bit about my setup. So um, here's the, here's a $60 BMS that basically has, um, it has a, an interface for the PC if you want to use it and then there's um, also a Bluetooth interface um, that plugs into into this thing and I'll show you that um, so basically what happens what how BMS's work is you basically have a battery a battery side and um, that's hooked directly to your battery and then you have, um, which is called the B minus. Then there's a C minus, which is hooked to your charger. And then you have um, the P minus, which is hooked to your loads. So I, I just did this setup and hooked everything up that way. And I just used my breadboard to make all the connections. Now you can see that. Uh, my cell number one is um, a little bit lower than the other cells. Um, and the BMS system kind of um, t lets me know that, you know, what the difference is there. You can kind of see it. Um, I think it's 90, um, 94 millivolts. Uh, so what I'm going to do now just to test it is I'm going to introduce, I'm going to put some load on it. Um, so... I'm basically burning this LED. Whoa, okay, so I you can kind of see now that it the LED kind of flashed a little bit and I'm at 3.17 now on my um on my on my cell number one is what I'm I'm reading. Um and you can kind of see that 
um, it is, you know, I'm, I'm 3.166 uh, on my on my first cell, and all the other cells are going down. So I'm going to run this down to where I start to have trouble. You can kind of see my current draw here is uh, negative 0.25. So I'm going to let these run down, and then we'll, I'll come back, back to you again. So you remember that. Uh, I was discharging and it looks like I still have that one cell number one that's uh, running a little small a uh, little low 2.5 I, I believe is the lowest is the absolute you're out of power on a uh, lipo 4 so you can kind of see I'm draining the current down a little bit but just to accelerate things I've got this um, 20 watt light and what I'm going to do is um, hook that up. This is the nice thing about um, working with a very low amp hour pack. You can you can drain things really easily and you can see what's going on um, without having to hassle a bunch of things. So I'm just going to turn this on and you can see now that the lights going on and off and the reason it's doing that is because the um, this this system is um, making changes in the um, let's see if you can see it go on and off you should be alarming in a, a little bit uh, yeah see the alarms so you can kind of see it's alarming on the discharge side and um, it, what it's doing is it's basically taking the ground that we're connected to here and it's um, basically causing a ground disconnect so all this stuff is ground disconnecting so what's happening exactly is this this um, this is the charge um, ground but this is the power ground so I'm running all the devices all the load devices back here and so it's seeing that it's protecting the cell right now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on my charger and now you can see that um, I just want to make sure I don't burn the, this wire because it's a lot of it's a lot of load. I'm going to disconnect this right now. <laughs> a lot of load. Okay, um, but you can see this lights on, and so it's allowing the charger to go on and recover the loads. But it's it's uh, if it gets overloaded, it's it's got a safety on it. And so for those of you that are thinking about running your packs way down, um, you remember that uh, these settings are pretty conservative. Um, I mean, they're not conservative. They're pretty low, right? Um, 2.7 on, um, on, uh, on cell uh, um, uh, voltage. And um, then we also have pack at... Um, pack at 10.8 okay but what happens is when you introduce load things go crazy uh and so and that's what some of us want to do so i think this is an excellent um insurance policy uh for for us uh, i'm going to turn off i'm going to turn off the power supply now okay all right so i got the supply off and it looked like the load just kind of when when the load came up it 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 kind of it got a current surge and i think it it basically said i'm not gonna um i'm not gonna handle that it, it kind of took the load off the cells so i really think that this is a pretty good system okay i've got the bluetooth app running now um i bought a inexpensive phone with a pink stripe down the 
the screen for like 25 bucks. I have an iPhone normally. So I'm going to just um, go to battery state here. And you can kind of see uh, it has uh, all the battery statistics uh, and basically what um, I've set for the capacity. And um, as far as the alarms, whether there's any of those alarms that existed. And then uh, you swipe over and then you can see um, the battery state of charge and um, some information about the battery um, over time the cell and then uh, you can also see uh, the parameters but it's like it's taken a while, while to load it okay uh, so you can kind of see where I've set the um, what what the under voltage is on the cells set at and everything so it's it's pretty good uh yeah so basically what you're gonna be most interested in probably is the the your cell voltage so i think as a relative value it's a pretty good deal you can you can um, read your cell voltage it pro provides a little bit of insurance um, because it's going to look out for you if you made some mistakes in your system design. And the way I have it mounted is I'm just using these uh, power posts. And I'm just putting the power posts in. And uh, I've, you know, of course, got the beefier hardware here. I'm getting this, I have this harness connected uh to a breadboard here and i'll and it allows you to do all kinds of experiments before you go and hook up to the big bank okay and that's a big bank for me right so the big problem is you're gonna buy one of these it's not that i paid four hundred dollars for used batteries and I wasn't going to pay $400 for a BMS system. Instead, I found a video online, which I'll show you the links on how to set all this up. And for $60, I think it's, I'm going to try it out anyway. I've heard a lot of smart people say bad things about BMSs, and I'm just not understanding why they don't want to make the $60 investment. Yet, they're, yet they want to read they want to read pack voltages from each cell and they're still having to spend the time to do that and so for an extra 60 bucks for 60 bucks you get to to read your battery cell voltage wirelessly on this and actually see what the hell's going on and as far as i can tell it gives me pretty good protection thank you for watching this video